back to my channel and it's still Wednesday November the 21st and I'm back in the kitchen and we're going to cook this Angus beef roast so uh, let's get started here I know I don't have the best angle and the best setup but I'm doing the best that I can with what I've got and that's all we can do in life right okay so this is the roast it is the one that um that Paula Vines bought from me so we're going to season it I'm just going to Rub it down with some salt and pepper. <clears throat> this is a, a beautiful piece of meat. I thought I turned off all of those notifications, but y'all, I got, um, about six months ago, I got this email. It, it was an advertisement. And it said, if you no longer wish to receive these emails, you know, click here to unsubscribe. So I did. And Lord have mercy. Ever since I did that, I've just been getting probably 10 junk emails a day. It, it makes me so mad. So I, I didn't do that again because I knew that I had, I had really opened myself up then. And then I realized that that uh, address where uh, it said to, to respond to, to unsubscribe, was the same. I believe it was an address somewhere in St. Louis, Missouri. So that's what all that dinging is. So, okay, so I have it, you know, a lot of salt and pepper on it here. You want it well seasoned. And y'all know me, I can't cook without my Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire sauce. So let's um pour that over it. Let it kind of sip in all the cracks and crevices just kind of season it up real good okay let me wash my hands and then I'll show y'all what all I'm going to be putting in the road okay first I want to turn my oven on 450 degrees y'all know I cook I always sort my food out in a very hot oven and then I reduce the heat And uh, I have a stick of butter in my roasting pan, so let's get the butter melted. And what you want to do is sear your roast, because if you sear it on all sides, then that will um, that will hold in the juice while it's it's cooking. And y'all, I do have um, I signed up for that Amazon affiliate link, which I can link you know, different items in the description below my videos. And if you click on that item, it'll take you to the Amazon site. And if you order that item, then I'll get a small percentage of your purchase. Um, but I, I have to do the link at the library because um, I have to, you know, I, I do all of my videotaping on my cell phone. So um, I don't have the control C or the control V to you know, to paste and copy, so on. And I imagine the library is closed. It's, it's Wednesday afternoon. I'm pretty sure that they've closed for the holiday. So I won't be linking that below this video, but if you go beneath some of my other cooking videos, you'll see the, um, the little colander set and the Worcestershire sauce and the Tony Casseries. But, um, you know, y'all can, even though I linked it, I know you can buy it at Walmart and it's a lot cheaper that way. So these are the little potatoes that were in the uh, the donated uh, food. So I'm just going to cut them in half. I did scrub them real, real good because I wanted to leave the skins on them. Okay, so what we're going to do is sear this roast in this uh, stick of butter. You can use olive oil if you want to. And then we're going to put our vegetables in there and saute them. And then we're going to make a little bit of a gravy. So I think the butter is about melted. Now I am going to um, get out my olive oil in case I need a little bit more grease or oil for the gravy. But I, I, I don't think I will. This, this is a lot of, um, this stick of butter is a lot. So it's um, it's pretty hot. Let's see. It's 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to sear um, all sides of it. So let's go ahead and put it in here. Get that started searing. You know, I know that y'all have watched your mamas and your grandmamas cook roast. And uh, everybody cooks them differently. <laughs> There's, I'm sure there are thousands of ways to prepare good old Sunday pot roast. But this is Glenda Merle's way, and, and we'll just see how it turns out. Of course, being from New Orleans and, and have, being influenced by French cooking, uh, that's one reason that I use a lot of butter in my cooking. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands, and then I'll just... Uh, Put that over with a fork. The reason I just did a few of the potatoes is because I'm going to make a pot of mashed potatoes. And uh, so I don't really need that many potatoes in with my vegetables. But I have about five carrots that I diced. So we're going to put those in. I have a little bit of garlic. I didn't mince it. I left it kind of big. Um, that way if Madeline comes and eats with me, she can pick out the garlic. She doesn't like garlic. And then I chopped up some celery. And then I have an onion that I left it in, in fairly big slices. I, I like it like that. So let me check the bottom and see if it's brown yet. Not quite brown enough. Oh, it's cold today. I think it's about 45 degrees. I have my door wide open because I invited my friend Linda to come over and eat with me. And um, she just got off work about an hour ago, and she's on her way over. So I told her I'll be in the kitchen filming, so she'll just have to walk right on in. <laughs> uh, one of my subscribers asked me to um, show her how I make the mashed potatoes, so... That's the only reason that I'm uploading this video today, is because she wants to make them for Thanksgiving tomorrow. Not that she doesn't know how to make mashed potatoes, she just wants to know how I make them. But <laughs> to tell you the truth, I'm really not that good at, at making mashed potatoes. Okay, so let's stand this up on this side here. And get it nice and brown down there on that side. Y'all, I went outside to look for my French whisk, and I can't find it. I, I really don't think I threw it away, but I don't know where I would have put it. You want to get all, all of this red off of it now. You want it good and seared now to hold all the juices in the, inside the meat. Oh, it smells so good, y'all. Okay, let's get this little bottom piece right here. Then I'm going to flip it over and get the fat side. Y'all, there's a group of YouTubers. We, we call ourselves... Um, the B-O-Y-T, which stands for the bottom of YouTube, because we are, <laughs> most of us are still on the bottom of YouTube. But anyway, they're having the bottom of YouTube awards, and I've been nominated for the best cooking channel. So I'm, I don't know what the link is, and I don't know how to copy it, but I will um, put um, the guy's channel underneath in the description. It's called... Uh, Life with Aaron, A-R-R-O-N, and he has the um, the little ballot on there that you can follow and, and vote for Glenda Merle for Best Cooking Channel. <laughs> okay, so let's see how this um, roast is looking. That's the top of it. 
Oh yeah, the bottom is nice and brown. Okay, let's take it out. I'm just going to put it right here on this plate. Okay, now what I want to do is saute my veggies in this butter. Or just a little bit. You don't want to cook them because they're going to cook in the oven. But we want them to get just a little wilted. So I had uh, two stalks of celery that I chopped, one onion, smells so good, but I know I better turn this thing on or I'm going to have the smoke alarm going off. And I don't want that. Then i got to climb up to the ceiling and push that little button to make it shut up. Like I said, you don't really want to, you know, brown these or anything. You just want to wilt it a little bit. My carrots. We'll just toss the potatoes in last. Okay. You know, I'm going to put some salt and pepper on this. Just throw in a bay leaf. My Cuban friend over at Ruthie D. She cooks with a, bot, a lot of bay leaves, so I try to remember that just to, to honor her and, and her Cuban cooking. So, if you want to go give her channel a check out, you'll just love her. She is so adorable. She does a vlog, a daily vlog, and it's R-U-T-H-Y and then just the letter D. Okay, so this is getting um, Wilt it a little bit. So what I want to do now, I have a half a cup of flour, but it's probably not going to take this much. What I want to do is thicken my juices here, and then I want to brown this flour a little bit just to make a little bit of gravy. So y'all, this is what it's looking like. If I ever get high tech, maybe I'll get some kind of camera that I can suspend from the ceiling. <laughs> Let's thicken that up a little bit with a little bit more flour. Oops, I forgot to put my garlic in. It's never too late for garlic. <laughs> okay. I'm going to have to get something... I can really scrape the bottom of that with. I better get busy because it's about to burn here. I gotta stop slacking, y'all. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is add one can of chicken broth. Now y'all can, uh, of course you can use beef broth. It's just your preference, but Y'all know I cook with a lot of chicken broth, so that's not a problem for me. And then I'm going to throw in my potatoes. I hope I have enough room for the roast, y'all. <laughs> I got so much stuff in this pot. I don't know if I'm going to have room for the roast. Oh, we'll figure it out. Okay, now what we want to do now is bring this to a boil. See, that's my nice thick gravy. Now, if you want your gravy darker, you can just let the flour get more brown. Or you can uh, cheat and buy yourself a, a bottle of that kitchen bouquet at the grocery store. And um, <laughs> put a few drops of that in it and get it nice and brown. I have been known to do that. I hate to admit it. but um, Now, let's put some salt and pepper in this gravy. A 
And let's get it stirred up real good. Now, now you want to check it. Make sure it's not too thick. Um, you know, um, I know some of the juice is going to cook out of this rose. So, I think I'll leave it as thick as it is. Okay, so now what you want to do is take your rose and set it back into your, your pan here with the fat side up. Okay? So I'm just going to ease it back into here. And not much juice came out of it, but um, I still poured what little bit was in there. Okay, you can see that I had about a, you know, a good bit of flour left in that one half a cup. So I reckon um, I'll change that to a fourth of a cup of flour. Okay, so turn off that fire, stir it just a little bit, I'm going to put the lid on it and put it in that 450 degree oven. You know, this gravy is really, really thick, so I'm going to put about a half a can of our uh, water. I can always thicken it up later if I need to. Well, I can't put a half a can because I have run out of room. It's okay. Okay, now let's cover it and put it in this 450 degree oven. <laughs> Nothing like just making it, huh? Okay, so I'm going to put it in the 450 degree oven for 15 minutes. Then I'm going to turn it down to 275 and let it cook for an hour. And we'll be back in an hour. See you then. So welcome back. Uh, before I forget, I do want to wish everyone a very happy and blessed Thanksgiving. Uh, I hope that you uh, get to spend it with your family and your loved ones. And that everybody is healthy and happy. And that you have a big turkey to share and to eat tomorrow. Um, okay, I'm finishing up with my rose. It, it cooked. Um, I put it in the 450 degree oven for 15 minutes. Then I turned the temperature down to 275 and it cooked for another hour. So this is what it looks like. Mm. It looks so good. So I'm going to remove it from the gravy in a minute and um, let it set. And then we will slice it and, and just see how tender it came out. It sure looks good. So let me go ahead and remove it from the gravy. I'm going to just set it right here on my cutting board. So what you want to do is just let it set for at least five minutes, longer if you can. Because um, that way when you do cut it, all the moisture um, will still remain in the inside of the meat and not drain out everywhere so we're going to let it sit here and while we're waiting for that i'm going to make some mashed potatoes um i had a request from my subscriber nancy how do i make mashed potatoes and i told her well <laughs> i'm really not that good at it but i will show you how i do try to make them um so what i did i took um these idaho north idaho red potatoes that came with my uh, my gifted food from Paula, and I peeled about seven of them, and then um, I boiled them in my big pot here that Tracy gave me. I boiled them for 15 minutes. So what I do want to do now, I um. Okay, so I strained all the water off of them. You can see I just kind of chunked them. Cut them in chunks, and then I came in here and stuck a fork in them, you know, and made sure they were tender. So, uh, what I want to do is take my all-clad um, potato masher and, and just start mashing. Um, let me throw in uh, about three-quarters of a stick of butter. Let's put that down in there and let it start getting tender. 
So what I want to do is start mashing them before I add the milk. I'm not going to measure it because I, I don't really know. You just have to go by what it looks, you know, as you go along. How it looks. So let me scoop my rose back out of the way. And then I will start mashing these potatoes and... Uh, I was just wondering if any of y'all, the ones that of y'all that live out on the farm, um, do you kill your own turkeys and, you know, um, prepare them for, for Thanksgiving that way? Or do you go to the grocery store and buy them like, like we have to do? I was just wondering if, if any of you, um, you know, raise your own turkeys for your, your food. I, um, I knew this guy when I lived in Illinois, Illinois. Um, his father owned a, a turkey farm, and everything that they ate was made from turkey meat. They had sausage and ground turkey and everything. So I'm going to put a lot of black pepper in here. That stick of butter melted already. Then I'm just going to put a... Oops, there goes my utensil holder. Just put in a dollop of sour cream. Now, I would not go and buy sour cream, you know, just to put in here, but I happen to have it on hand. And then I'm just going to add the milk until I feel like there's enough of it. So let me just kind of stir that up a little bit. And then I want to just, you know, mash the potatoes some more. This is what they're looking like so far. And you just keep mashing until... You have all the lumps out of them. And this is a very good potato masher. Um, I purchased it at Williams Sonoma back a few years ago when I was working and doing the nanny jobs and I had the money because they are expensive. They're about $30. But um, it's real comfortable. It's real easy to, to hold and to manage. I'm just going to check them. They, they just seem like they're still could use a little bit more milk. And let me taste them. Now, whenever I boil the potatoes, I did uh, add the salt to the water. But they need more salt. More pepper. A little more salt, not too much. And a little more milk, and then we're done. And, and that's all that there is to it, Nancy. <laughs> of course, you can just add, you know, butter as you want it. But, um, I mean, these are perfect. Couldn't ask for better mashed potatoes. They're smooth. Um... If I had a computer, I would um, find this potato mash on Amazon and link it, link it below so y'all could buy it and I would get a commission off of it. But the only way I can do that is to use the computer at the library. And like I said earlier, I'm pretty sure it's closed on a Wednesday afternoon. But um, here's what they look like. Just regular hand mashed potatoes. And then I'm going to eat them with this gravy over them, and they're going to be delicious. Okay, so I think the roast has rested long enough, although I do see some of the juice. Some of the juice has uh, come out of it. I don't want to lose any of that juice. And, you know, I only cooked it an hour, so it's probably going to be medium rare, which is okay with me. That's how I like it. So, um... Just slice into it here. Can y'all see it? Yeah. Let me put it in the there. I put the tripod in the sink. Okay, let's slice into it and see which end I want to slice. This one, I think. Oh yeah, it's it's actually. It's not medium rare, it's more medium. Let 
Let's taste it. it oh, it looks so good, y'all. You can see that it is very juicy. Some of the juice is coming out of it. I'm going to um, probably add that juice to the gravy. Let's taste it and see what it tastes like. It's good. Um, I did not put enough salt on it. So, and it's kind of tough. That's my fault because I didn't cook it long enough. So, I'm going to put it back in this gravy and cook it another hour at 275. And I bet you it's just going to fall apart by then. So, this is going to end this. And um, y'all have a good Thanksgiving. I love you. And just keep on coming back. Bye, guys.